So good morning, one and all. Myself, Professor Sana Ravi Prasad, welcome you all to the second session of the day, Sampling and Sampling Techniques. Our resource person for the session is Dr. Anil Sutar, Associate Dean of School of Research Methodology of Tata Institute of Social Science. I'll give a brief introduction about the sir. Sir has graduated in BA with Economics, Applied Statistics and Sociology as the core subject from the Karnataka University, Darwad in the year 1994. And later on, he obtained master degree in Sociology from the same university. Sir has awarded Junior Research Fellowship, that is JRF by UGC, New Delhi, to pursue research in 1998 and with research fellowship, he obtained MPhil and PhD degrees in sociology from the Karnataka University, Darwat. He has in total 18 years of experience in teaching research methodology at master's and at doctoral level programs and has been involved in training and dissemination activities related to research methods and analysis. He is also the convener of the MPhil and PhD programs at TISS and actively involved in mentoring and guiding research scholars in the institute. He has been involved with training activities for the Sasi Waters UNICEF district facilitators. Dr. Sutta has been invited as resource person for the research related national and international workshops and has been guiding MA and PhD students for their research on diverse social, political and educational themes. His core areas of research interest include qualitative and quantitative research methods, education, participatory governor, governance, and leadership. He has published many papers on themes of research methodology and democratic decentralization in national and international journals. We welcome you, sir. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Now, without wasting much time, I would like to call upon uh, Arthur Sutar sir to carry over the session. Sir, over to you. Yeah. Yeah. Th thank you. Thank you, Professor Sahana, uh, Dr. Lichi Santosh, and uh, <clears throat> Principal of SMC College, Professor Dr. Sridhar Sethi, for inviting me uh, to this uh, you know, workshop to deliver a talk. Uh, I, I will be going to speak on sampling methods. And you all know uh, this sampling is uh, divided into two sessions. Uh, the, the, the session I am basically focusing on theoretical aspects. Uh, then uh, uh, the after uh, lunch, there will be a session by my colleague, which will be focused basically on uh, practical application of you know, sampling. Uh, especially issues of uh, no, um, uh, estimation of sampling error, determination of sample size, uh, such uh, no, technicality and uh, operational aspect will be dealt by my other colleague. Uh, so what I am basically going to speak is about you know, a very equally important aspect of sampling, uh, because there has been a tendency that, you know, or only technical aspect of sampling, such as uh, you know, estimation of sampling error, uh, then the scientific determination of sample size. So these have gained uh, you know, a lot of uh, importance uh, among the research scholars you know, community. But uh, what kind of sampling method, uh, the technique, uh, one has to select for a particular kind of research has 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 not been that much seriously deliberated. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, as uh, you know, uh, Professor Sahana rightly told, uh, I happens to be the anchor and coordinator of uh, you know, coursework for MPhil PhD at our institute. Based on my own experiences of uh, you know, uh, having interaction with uh, you know, doctoral students and uh, you know, students of Master of Philosophy, let me you know, you know share with you some of the you know, uh, you know, uh, real life you know, uh, illustrations uh, how how research scholars you know uh, they 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 by 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 mistakenly they select uh, certain sampling methods 
which which were actually not appropriate for the kind of research objectives the kind of research design their study proposes for instance you know uh, i come across a research project on you know construction workers in mumbai in mumbai city and the sampling method proposed was uh, a simple random sampling uh, but uh, in case of uh, you know uh, uh, selecting uh, you know level of significance estimation of sample error and uh, scientific determination of sample size the proposal i found very excellent even uh, the, the scholar has applied you no know, uh, a very scientific procedure used scientific formula to determine what is the appropriate you know sample size for uh, uh, studying the construction workers in mumbai city but uh, we found the major problem with the method of sampling itself how one can think of simple random sampling in case of construction workers as we all know the sampling frame is very crucial in case of you know uh, sampling methods uh, that fall under the category of random uh, probabilistic sample but in case of construction workers you no know, construction workers basically uh, they, they fall under the category of informal sector the, the 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 construction sites actually you know uh, sporadically spread across mumbai city and uh, as we know though though there are you know uh, social security measures uh, meant for uh, informal sector workers including construction you know workers but, but there is no such a data bank available with be it ministry of labor or any other you no know, developmental agencies so now the moot question is when there is a no sampling frame i mean uh, uh, the the listing of the uh, construction workers in mumbai city at particular time again you all know that you know these construction workers are bit a kind of transitory kind of a population uh, highly mobile they, they quite often you know shift the sites Uh, they keep moving on also so what 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 i am trying to highlight is uh, uh, the the issues of you know uh, sample size uh, how scientifically one you know determine sample size and uh, how to estimate sample sampling error uh, and uh, all these things are quite crucial at the same time even what kind of sampling method no this this is basically you know actually inferred by your research objectives your research design and and there are lot of theoretical consideration how how one should think about a particular sampling method and uh, when when you find you know probabilistic samplings are important and at what stage you find you no know, uh, non probabilistic you one you, you might have come across you no know, Uh, there, there is a kind of uh, dichotomy at one hand we have a random also known as uh, probabilistic sampling methods so starting with simple random sampling uh, systematic random sampling uh, stratified random sampling cluster and multi stage sampling these are the you know uh, main you know probabilistic sampling methods whereas uh, the other end we have another set of you know methods uh, non non probabilistic non random and uh, some scholars even you know uh, attribute them as you know a subjective sampling method hmm. and some even uh, go to the extent of saying that you know uh, what i can say um, judgmental kind of sampling methods basically under uh, no quality to uh, we can we can use much you know pair pair term uh, to designate you know non random sampling we can call them as you know instead of calling subject to discriminatory sampling methods we can call non random sampling as quality to you no know, uh, sampling methods where we we think about convenient sampling method 
purpose use sampling method, quota sampling method, snowball sampling. Uh, you, you all must be familiar with uh, the term no? snowball sampling. These are you know, some of the uh, non-random sampling methods. And, uh, and what the basic questions I, I, I come across, the basic issue concern is that research scholars, especially the young research scholars, they, they never actually you know, seriously deliberate upon which kind of method they should actually think for their research project. Should they go for the group of probabilistic or non-probabilistic? And sometimes, interestingly, there, there could also be a possibility of combination. Sometimes we think that you no know, research methodology is a zip, you no know, uh, uh, set forth by law. No, it is not like that. The research methodology is not actually, you know, uh, actually a code of you know, uh, procedure like uh, CRPC or IPC. It is nothing like that. Research methodology, it all is actually shaped by, you know, academic paternity, the academic traditions, academic protocols. So even interestingly, uh, yeah, I will, I will, I will share the PPTs. Yeah, somebody is interested in PPT. Nagaraj, I will, I will share. Okay. Uh, so uh, what I was uh, trying to tell, no, uh, uh, the the actually uh, one should go for uh, no probabilistic or non probabilistic. The, there is not much you know deliberate and serious deliberation. So. This is uh, this is the prelude. This is the prelude for my my talk actually. Uh, no, which which sampling method is uh, no uh, appropriate, which is not appropriate, and uh, I, I will I will I will I will share with you uh, some of my PPTs, and we can we can again discuss while you know uh, seeing those PPTs. Yeah. Yeah, PPTs are, are visible and Agraj. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. It's visible. Sir. Yeah. Okay. So these are some of the you know readings, very important readings you can note down. No, Earl Bobby's work, The Practice of Social Research, and David Gray's work, Doing Research in the Real World, and one, one uh, interesting uh, no, uh, peer reviewed journal, Theoretical Justification of Sampling Choices in International Marketing Research by NL you know, Reynolds and others. You, you can even you know, uh, refer that work also. The, the article is available in just a uh, no, e resource uh, no, site. You can access it instantly now also if you are having you know, access. Mm. So uh, basically, you know, I, will, I will discuss uh, some of the issues. Uh, uh, th there were uh, certain issues I will skip because I will go in a very structured way. Yeah. So th th this uh, I will start with, you know, uh, probability or random sampling methods. Uh, I will give you some idea. Then uh, we will we'll think about certain you know, examples of uh, you know, uh, probability or you know, random sampling methods. The, the basic uh, you know, provision of uh, uh, random sampling method is uh, uh, it gives equal chances to all elements cases in the population to be selected. Like most of you must be knowing you know, lottery method. Even you know, uh, probabilistic random sample is also selected with the help of random number tables. But uh, lottery method is the best illustration. You can imagine uh, you know, uh, what does it mean of giving equal chances to all the cases. Suppose when I say, uh, Nagraju, when I say, you no, know, I am selecting you know, 
uh, I am using uh, uh, no, a random sampling method to select management faculty, management teachers in Mumbai. In Mumbai means I am giving equal chances to all management teachers in Mumbai. Management teachers in Kandivili, management teachers in Kolaba, uh, management teachers in Chambur. You are getting my point. When, when I say that I am, I am using random sampling method to select my you know, respondents, means it is very serious claim. It is very serious claim. Serious claim means I, I have an obligation. I have, I have an obligation to ensure that all management teachers, of course, I can further delimit by saying that you know, management teachers from aided college, management teachers from you know, non-aided, that is your prerogative. But whatever you know, narrowing down you do, then you, you should be in a position to ensure that you no know, all the all the management teachers in, in that particular area are, are given equal and fair chance of being selected in your sample. That is the basic idea behind random sampling method. That is how you no know, this uh, uh, simple random sampling is also you no know, random sampling is also known as non-discriminatory in nature non discriminatory means you, you you are not supposed to there are in sampling method no as i again i let me reiterate in sampling we we, we talk about you no know, uh, errors sampling errors non sampling errors even inclusion and exclusion of certain you know participants respondents is also serious sampling error uh, that we call non sampling error how, how certain you know, management teachers are not listed in my sampling frame. So that can be an issue. And uh, this random sampling methods are quite you know, uh, crucial when your research objectives uh, are, are aiming at you know, estimating population parameters. Population parameters based on the sample. Population parameters, you, you can take you know, uh, uh, based on me, Example mean you try to estimate population mean, like for instance, no, uh, 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 if you, you are interested to you know, see, for example, uh, how, how many management faculties uh, they, they, re, they read, no, international peer reviewed journals in Mumbai, uh, or they have subscribed, whether online or hard copy. How many management faculties in Mumbai have subscribed to peer-reviewed international management journal? One or two, whatever it may be, at least one journal. How many of them? They have subscribed it. So then uh, uh, one way of doing it, you know, you do census. You are getting my point. Do census means it is very gigantic task, actually. A lot of energy, cost involved, time, you no know, traveling. Of course, nowadays you can do it even online also. But there are issues related to accuracy. Uh, that is why you no know, the census result into more problems than you know sample survey. It has been very very well said methodologically. Uh, sample surveys are giving more accurate results than than the census survey because. The census involves uh, use task. Uh, that, that is why uh, you, know, uh, you can think of a case you know, where in while counting, while counting, you know, uh, hundred notes, hundred notes, you 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 are likely to make you no know, mistakes, count it twice, thrice. But while counting ten notes, I don't think some someone will count ten notes three times or two times. Because 10, 10 notes, no, you, you are very sure there, there is less likely error. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 notes you counted accurately. But while if a bundle of notes uh, is given to you, suppose some 500 notes are given, then you will become nervous and uh, even a kind of you know, uh, anxiety also, whether I will count properly or not. You can you can use this metaphor to depend that you know uh, sample surveys yield more accurate re results than census. So in that case, 
just by selecting some hundred, uh, no, you can even select some hundred management teachers in Mumbai. Of course, there may be, you know, 2000 management teachers. Just uh, you can select hundred management teachers and uh, uh, intro them uh, what kind of international peer reviewed journals they are reading, they have subscribed. Uh, suppose uh, based on, you, you will find out the mean, mean number. Hmm. Then based on that, you are going to generalize uh, to the overall population. The, when when your, your research exercises involve such kind of estimation of you know, population parameters, then you know, random samplings are very crucial uh, or very, very, very significant one. You, 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 you are not supposed to attempt to estimate population parameters by, by following uh, uh, purpose you kind of sampling methods, no non-random sampling methods. So th that will be a very serious issue. So th th this is a kind of background uh, to this uh, random sampling. And then uh, we'll see one by one this, uh, uh, the first uh, popular method in random sample is, we call it SRS, th that is simple random sampling. Basically, this, as you know, a lottery method, a strict randomness is followed here. It gives equal chance to all the elements in the population to be selected. And this simple random sampling you can think of using because in any methodology, even sampling is an important component of methodology. In methodology, appropriateness is very important. So simple random sampling is, is highly advisable, highly recommended when, when the, the respondents, the participants you are dealing, the population of respondent is quite homogeneous. When it is homogeneous, then simple random sampling is the most appropriate. Homogeneous in terms of, you, know, you, you can identify it, you know, demographic uh, no, uh, uh, variables uh, or some other uh, no, uh, variables of your research interest. Uh, when you come across that the sample, uh, the population you are going to study is more or less homogeneous, then simple random sample uh, can be uh, advisable. Then systematic random sampling. This, this again, a uh, 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 variant of you know, random sampling only. Most of the time uh, we, we, we come across uh, simple random sampling only. Uh, our, our scholars, you know, they, they vaguely they say that random sampling method I will follow. That, that is not the correct way of saying. Uh, th there is not one random sampling method. There are several you know, uh, subgroups within you know, random sampling. When you say that you are, you are proposing to use uh, you know, random sampling, be specific whether you are using the simple random sampling method or systematic random sampling method or stratified random sampling method or other. So here is the second case of the systematic random sampling method. It, it, it again, no, it is a bit a kind of you know, a combination of you know, uh, uh, the, uh, which assures your representativeness and also randomness. Uh, because as I told you, you know, in case of simple random sample, uh, simple random sampling method is uh, quite weak to ensure representativeness of the population if population is heterogeneous. That is why we say that you know, its use can be limited only when population is homogeneous. But uh, in case of uh, you know, uh, a population which is uh, heterogeneous, but the, in that case, you want to assure you want randomness and also you are concerned about whether representativeness of the sample then systematic random sampling is advisable appropriate what it said it it allows more representation than randomness uh, uh, it, it divides the population into sampling intervals and uh, then allows to select a case in each interval. I have given an illustration. A sampling interval is uh, determined by dividing the number of cases in sampling frame, that is population, by the desired number of cases in the sample. For example, 
if there are 200 households if you are intended to do a no household consumer survey and if there are 200 households in the population and the researcher if you want to want a sample of size 20 then the sampling interval can be arrived at dividing 200 by 20 that is 10 uh, 10 uh, in in case 10 is the uh, interval for your selecting sample or even it can be called as sampling unit uh, uh, what how it works you know the researcher can select household number 10 20th, 30th, 40th till 200. Then you will get 20 cases, 100%. You will get 20 cases. This is one way. Or you can, what you can do? You can make a separate sheet of you know, 1 to 10 houses, one box, 20 to, you know, 10 to 20 houses, another box. Like there will be you no know, different sampling frames. Then from each box, you select one household then definitely you will get uh, 20 as your sample. Uh, th th this is uh, you know, uh, quite uh, interesting uh, because in case, you know, uh, if, if, uh, you know, uh, if you follow just simple random sampling method, th there is a possibility of you know, getting you know, uh, cases from same characteristics and uh, the sampling may not have that much diversity and representativeness. It may not have much variation. In research, it is also very important to have a component of variation in the variable. For that, actually, in order to ensure that uh, uh, the, your, your, the phenomena you are studying has a dimension of you know, variations, you, you can think of using simple random sampling. Then here is the case of uh, stratified random sampling. Uh, again, it is combination of randomness and representative. It is useful whenever the population under study is more heterogeneous. Uh, here again, uh, sampling frame is divided into uh, different strata. Cases are then randomly selected. And as you know, uh, there are two kinds of you know, uh, stratified uh, you know, sampling, proportionate stratified sampling and disproportionate stratified sampling. I have given uh, the illustrations here. You can just see. Uh, in case of proportionate stratified sampling, uh, the, 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 the population uh, size uh, the, sub, the subset is actually given weightage in proportionate. For instance, suppose uh, in, in a college there are 400 students and you want to select 60 as your sample, as I have shown here. Then out of 60, suppose out of 400, there are 300 from a arts stream and there are 100 from science stream. Then if you have to select 60 total from this 400, then ideally speaking, you should select 45 from our stream randomly, you are doing randomly. Then 15 students from science stream. You are getting my point. Then that become 60 as your sample. Because here you have to see the proportion, proportion of our students in total student is 75. Am I right? 300 divided by 400 into 100, you can take the percentage. The proportion of art students in total population is 75. Similarly, 75% of your sample should be art student. That is the idea of proportionate sampling. You are getting my point. In case of uh, no, science students, the proportion of science students among uh, uh, out of total student is 25%. 400 and 100 students, 25. So then in case of your 60 sample, 25% of sample should be science. This is the idea of uh, proportionate stratified sampling. Stratified here in the sense, no, we are, we are dividing the students into strata, like art stream students, one, one strata, then science students, and another strata. If you can even think of if there is another branch like management, 
Hmm. Uh, or, or there is again another branch called no law law students. Five six starts a start also you can create. Then from each starter you can select sample. There are two ways in certified no proportionately you can select or disproportionately. And here I have given the example of uh, disproportionate certified sampling. Four hundred students, three hundred and hundred. What I have done here, I have taken from arts 30 students and from science also 30 students. Mm, uh, so the, 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 the relative strength of students in the population is ignored here. So sometimes, now, now let me uh, give you an illustration, a real life situation illustration. I come across one PhD scholar, one PhD scholar uh, interested to actually uh, use a stratified random sampling to select her respondents, participants for her study. Her, her study was something about uh, 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 job satisfaction and career uh, mobility among social workers, professional social workers. And uh, she divided no, social workers into different strata for selecting sample. You, you are getting my point. Uh, social work, professional social work, like like in management, in commerce, in commerce you have so many uh, no streams, no branches like finance. Uh, uh, you you have HR, uh, you, you have organizational behavior, uh, and uh, you, you want operational research. Uh, so many minutely you can divide the stream. Similarly. Uh, for, for others, social work uh, profession uh, looks as a, as a homogeneous, but it is not so. Uh, there, there are some social workers no, who work in corporate world also, uh, very highly, highly placed and uh, no, very lucrative profession. You must be knowing CSR no, uh, uh, it has become a responsibility now of all corporate world. Uh, so she, she divided uh, the social workers. Let me come to that example. Uh, like, you know, uh, social workers, commun community organization, social workers uh, with specialization in community organization, and uh, social workers with specialization in social welfare administration. That was uh, another branch. And uh, she also come across uh, uh, social workers, as I told, you know, uh, something like you know, a public policy and governance, corporate responsibility, that group. And one more group she divided was a so social worker, that is uh, medical, medical and psychiatric social workers. Okay, when she, when she collected uh, the list of the social workers in, in a particular you know, region, and uh, she found, uh, 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 no, uh, like, uh, uh, for instance, community organization social workers were very big number. They, they were almost 500. And uh, social welfare administration like NGOs and all no, social workers, they were also quite big, moderate, uh, sizable number, 300. And when it comes to corporate also, they were okay, less, but okay, 200, 150 were, uh, those were social workers, public policy, governance kind of stream. But interestingly, when she uh, she noticed that in case of medical and medical social worker in the field of medical, no, like uh, in Mumbai, you must be knowing KM hospital is there, no public sector hospitals. They, 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 there is a government position of medical social worker. You, you, you may not be knowing. So she found their number was very less. Community organization social worker were 500. And medical social workers were around 35 in her population. Now, if she goes by you know, proportionate, uh, then the medical social worker will be very marginal. Very marginal. You are getting my point. Where is 500? And uh, this medical social worker will be you know, uh, very, very sidelined in, in their vices, you know, their issues would not have been captured as, as in case of the larger groups. So she had this problem. She, she was interested in going for proportionate because 
she was under the impression that you no know, proportionate stratified sample is more scientific and uh, non strat non proportionate is not so but uh, we we tried to help her advised her saying that in such kind of situation uh, disproportionate stratified sampling is the appropriate one so don't go by you know uh, proportionate then uh, you know out of 35 uh, she could involve you know around around 20 uh, 15 uh, medical you know and psychiatric social workers were uh, the visibility of that group was ensured by you know following second method Th these things are very important you know for young budding researchers while developing their proposals you know uh, uh, the holistic view of you know actually you know uh, what kind of method one should follow is very important uh, then uh, the in, in random no the last one i am discussing is is that of cluster and multi stage sampling and uh, this this sampling framework method is quite useful uh, when when you are dealing with once again a large population Whenever the sampling, you no know, large population, if sampling frame is not uh, there, I will give an illustration. Suppose, uh, you know, some of you may be from economics, uh, development studies and all, or even otherwise commerce also, you must be knowing it. Uh, I come across a study of, you know, uh, small and marginal farmers, we talk, you know, uh, as a category. In, in, in Indian economy, farmers have been classified differently, you know, uh, large farmers, medium, medium farmers, small and marginal farmers, and government have specific schemes for, you know, small and marginal farmers. Suppose if I want to study the, the uh, small uh, uh, farmers in Maharashtra, I don't think, you know, getting the list of all these small farmers in Maharashtra is that easy. Of course, nowadays, thanks to the, you know, digitalization of land records and all, but, but still it is very, you know, gigantic task. So in that case, how one should go about, uh, so because I may not be having much resources, my funding is very limited and my research stops are very few and uh, the time duration for completing my research project is also very limited in in such cases you no know, how i should study the small farmers in whole maharashtra without compromising scientific rigor i will illustrate the method in in such cases the cluster and multi stage sampling method actually rescues the researcher and uh, th this this sampling is also known area sampling why it is so because basically it is uh, you know uh, selection is decided on geographical basis i will show illustration uh, here is the illustration i hope you can see you no know, uh, for a multi stage it has two terms no this sampling multi stage and cluster then you should have you should demonstrate in sampling plan you are following different uh, phases that is multi stages and you should also demonstrate you, you are selecting clusters also uh, clusters means uh, a combination of uh, you know uh, sampling elements uh, I, I will illustrate it let me you know for instance what i will do my i am going to study uh, small farmers in maharashtra how I can do it with the help of multi-stage and cluster? The Maharashtra, I, I, I will divide the whole state into uh, four divisions, Western Maharashtra, Konkan, Vidarbha, and Maratoda. Then what I will do, again, very interesting point here, you, you should also keep in mind, in cluster and multi-stage sampling, even the principle of randomness is applied. So in Western Maharashtra, randomly, I will select two districts. There could be in Western Maharashtra, no, around 10-15 districts. I am selecting randomly without any, any bias. I will randomly select two districts. Similarly, from Konkan Maharashtra, I will select two districts. 
from Vidarbha, I will select two districts. From Maratwada, two districts. So my first stage, that is why you can note down, Nagraju, uh, you can note down. Uh, the first stage, multi-stage sampling, no? Uh, what are the multi-stages here? The first stage is, I have selected eight districts. That is the first stage. Now my sampling is not done. It is, it is first stage. Then, then at second level, what I will do? I will select one block or taluka from each district. So in Western Maharashtra, I have selected two districts. Means one, one taluka or one block from each district means two blocks I am selecting from Western region. Similar is Konkan. So at second stage, I have selected eight blocks. Now uh, I am ignoring eight districts. Eight district is actually disappeared. Now my focus is on eight blocks. This is second stage. In multi-stage sampling, the second stage is I have selected eight blocks. Now, after this, what I will do? I will select one village from each block. One village from each block. And in each region, there are two blocks. No, then two villages from each region. So in the third stage, if you see here, eight villages I have selected. Very scientifically, <laughs> you are getting my friend. Very scientifically, I have done without any bias. So eight villages are my final cluster. Again, cluster, why it is cluster, you know? District is cluster. Am I right? District as a unit is cluster. Block or taloka is also cluster. Then village is also cluster. That is why the name multi-stage and cluster sampling. Now, what I will do from each village, I will, I will select 100 for small farmers from each village. I will select 100 small farmers. So 800 will be my sample size. You are getting my point. 800 will be my sample size. Then how I arrived at 800 and all, you can even, you know, you can revisit sampling size determination formula. Then accordingly, we can plan it also. Should you select, you know, 50 farmers from each village or 35 or 75, that will be decided by your sample size and determination. So these, these 100 at, at actually, you know, at fourth stage, I mean, third stage of selected village, I could not actually show here, no, the fourth stage is the 800 small farmers. Then you are actually interviewing the small farmers. That is the fourth stage. This is the illustration about uh, multi-stage and cluster sampling. Now we'll come to this uh, non-random sampling methods. And as I told you in the beginning, no, uh, in case no, if you are interested to you know, study uh, uh, some some uh, no, uh, respondents, some population which are quite you know, unorganized, very very what I can say transition in nature, quite mobile, not state not stationary, quite mobile population, transitionary population, unorganized, also undocumented, undocumented. Suppose you know, <laughs> there were studies of you no, know, even there has been an issue of you no, know, sometimes you no. Know, uh, th there are some refugees from neighboring country in our our our, our country in India, like uh, no uh, Bangladeshi refugees are there. Uh, they are illegally staying. And uh, if you say that uh, I want to study Bangladeshi refugees in India by following uh, random sampling method, means it is quite surprising uh, because you know uh, they are undocumented, and even we can say hidden population. Uh, and in such cases, no, uh, the qualitative uh, sampling methods are the appropriate one. 
so that is why i have written no no need of when 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 you don't have sampling frame even construction workers no construction workers or street vendors street vendors and all uh, for such kind of groups no you can't think of simple random sampling or or any random sampling method you can even think of combination combination is okay you can combine two different methods uh, that is okay you can say first i i i followed convenient sampling method then i started simple random that is also okay uh, but to begin with there are certain groups and population where you can't apply random sampling method and these are basically you no know, uh, suitable when when your research purpose is exploration mostly exploration and uh, in 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 research there are uh, two important consideration you no know, for instance you uh, know uh, external validity and internal validity and uh, uh, the the random sampling methods are quite suitable for external validity for ensuring external validity that is generalization estimation uh, uh, testing uh, your, your study results beyond the you know research setting uh, that is the case of uh, external validity but there is also important objective in research that is internal validity so if your concern is internal validity then non random sampling methods are most appropriate there you no know, when when your purpose is to ensure internal validity of your research then ideally you should go for non random sampling method that is internal validity in the sense you no know, when you are trying to see the cause effect you know relation uh, to begin with you you are ascertaining whether this will lead to this result then then consciously you will select a particular group and uh, you, you test it then once the results so a kind of uh, you know efficiency or significance then you can think of random sampling methods at larger level so this non random sampling methods one more idea is basically th these are used in case of small groups not like large surveys ideally speaking internal validity for testing internal validity the non random sampling methods are used that is how we say that no these are best suited for exploratory uh, research studies and and there are other uh, no issues also like uh, as i told you no uh, when the population is hidden when the population is undocumented then non random sampling methods are the 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 best you know uh, methods in uh, research okay we'll discuss uh, you know uh, one by one what are like as we did in case of random uh, these are the you know uh, four important uh, no non random sampling methods uh, the purpose is sampling convenient sampling quota sampling snowball sampling we'll see one by one what they mean and how one can think of using them in research the purpose of sampling you no know, again i come across in in sampling in sampling you no know, uh, two thing two two terms are highly actually what i can say uh, Uh, no, no misused no, I, i won't say abused misused in the sense no random random sample people use it without applying mind when people say uh, I, i am going to use random sample they say that uh, random means arbitrary arbitrary i randomly i, I visited there something like that but in sampling random has very scientific connotation in the same way even purpose of sampling has also been you know misused in the sense you no know, uh, grossly grossly actually you know misrepresented people say that they are using purpose of sampling method when actually it is not the kind of method they are using so what is purpose of sampling method 
purpose use sampling again no most of this uh, per, you know uh, qualitative sampling method non random sampling methods they can go well in combination for instance first you can you know uh, do uh, uh, convenience sampling then you can apply purpose use or first you can do convenience sampling then you can go for snowball sampling this is how most of the time uh, the qualitative methods have been designed and, and in most case this uh, this combination of sampling methods is quite popular and and allowed in case of qualitative research than in case of uh, quantitative uh, surveys so purpose of sampling basically is you, you can note down here i i i, I may not have actually you know given that that crustal meaning of what is purpose sampling the the basic idea of purpose sampling is uh, you, you, in case of a, a certain sampling in case of a particular kind of study when you feel that random sampling is unimportant random sampling is unimportant then you think of purpose use sampling or random sampling won't have any implication for your study result then the purpose use sampling is the the best method i mean uh, the purpose use sampling is a kind of sampling method which is directed by your research purpose or your research objective for instance uh, you you if you want to know study for most of the time in anthropological i will give uh, some you know popular example so that you can compare you can think about other similar cases in your discipline in anthropology or in ethnography uh, students say for instance you no know, in mumbai they they say that they want to study a particular you know tribe nomadic tribe a day notified and no nomadic tribe for instance i come across some some research studies on no a study of parsi you know pardi a study of pardi community or pardi tribe in mumbai or in tana and uh, here selecting pardi pardi tribe is actually emanated that that selection is emanated by the research intent The, the researcher actually you know it is like selection of a particular area if somebody says i want to study management teachers in mumbai uh, of course there, there there are external experts i come across they would ask why management teachers in mumbai why not in kolkata so you will give your own justifications no your report uh, issues of logistics those things are there but in ethnography uh, the research objectives for instance in case of pardi no uh, pardi uh, uh, tribe which happens to be during british period uh, uh, actually you know uh, uh, it was considered uh, denotified i mean once it was uh, under british rism listed as a habitual offender or criminal tribe and and in after independence how this particular tribe is undergoing transition and changes you can say that you no know, pardi and other related other tribe you can select and and the idea for if somebody ask why you have selected only pardi why you have not selected other they, they, there are other nomadics why you haven't selected if, if questions have been raised on this issue you know then the the, the your justification usually uh, revolve around saying that my research intent my research intent actually calls for selecting such group only that is a purpose of sampling the purpose of sampling means the, your study objectives can be fulfilled by selecting that particular sample only that is the case of uh, purpose of sampling I, i will come back during discussion If you have any questions then uh, convenience sampling 
this is quite you uh, know uh, interesting at uh, and quite you uh, know uh, commonly used method convenient sampling even i asked you know why you want to study management uh, uh, teachers in mumbai uh, whether management teachers in mumbai are very distinct than management teachers in delhi and uh, bangalore is there any distinctness uniqueness or if you can even bring in also mumbai happens to be you know commercial capital of india and management and commerce disciplines how they are shaping something then still you you can bring in scientific angle to your uh, rational but otherwise uh, if you if you say that i want to study management teachers in mumbai somebody may ask you on why not in pune then uh, most of the times uh, the, the issues uh, no convenience is at first case it appears okay but here what i am i am i am talking convenience sampling not in terms of selecting topic for your research it is within again you know i will i will give illustrations within within your research project itself what kind of sample method what kind of respondents you select for instance Uh, a, a physician or a doctor conducting research and uh, using his or her own patients as sample for the study it could be an example of convenient sampling patients are uh, going to doctors clinics no family physician regularly the doctor may administer a survey on them only because they are uh, these are her own patients uh, there is a good report uh, they, there is no scope for non response high response rate will be there in survey that is also important so the best method example for convenient sampling is a doctor studying one's own patients of course there are ethical issues uh, that, that for a time being i am not touching upon no there the, the, there are protocols that actually prohibits no uh, uh, doctors doing research on their own patients uh, it has moral moral issues also and it has scientific issues also similarly teachers teachers uh, no using their own students their own college students or teachers using their own school students for their survey these are convenient sampling and sometimes you you as a as a researcher you you will select a particular school for studying students precisely because the school principal happens to be very friendly with you you, you can still mention that or you, you might have worked earlier in that school or college and you have built good rapport there these all could be a case of convenient sampling and one more interesting case of convenient sampling i come across for instance uh, uh, suppose uh, 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 in in a village study a researcher was uh, uh, contemplating of doing survey of uh, uh, no two three villages but the villages were very geographically spread out sporadically households for instance three four villages actually you know Uh, spread across almost you know some uh, uh, 20 kilometers apart and uh, a researcher uh, had a difficulty in going to each household and conducting you know study then uh, a researcher thought up a very innovative idea uh, these three villagers you know used to come to a particular place for uh, weekly village bazaar you all must be aware even in still you know uh, some villages you no know, there is a culture uh, like village bazaar day will be there village market day uh, most of the villagers they congregate even for selling their products also and buying they congregate at one common place and uh, this researcher was very smart then a researcher thought why should i waste time going all these three four villages Uh, and that to under you no know, when there was a temperature was so hot during summer 
Mm -hmm. A researcher went to that village market, Bazaar Day, then uh, that marketplace, and there uh, he asked villagers, you are from which village, then conducted uh, interviews. I am not saying whether this method is uh, more ethically okay uh, or not, but what I am trying to tell you is that this is the illustration. Even if you are very creative, you can even think of convenient sampling of this kind. Now, here is a case of quota sampling. As I told in case of no, small farmers. Similar is, you, know, you, can, you can think of, you know, that was random. That was random sampling, but in, in, in non-random way, if you want to study different groups like, you know, uh, for instance, uh, you can even take the example of you know, this uh, consumerism. Uh, once it was a very hot topic, I know, few years back, 10 years back, when uh, this uh, you know, uh, liberalization, LPG was quite popular, you know, when uh, liberalization, privatization, and globalization was actually launched. And the initial stage, of the intense uh, no, debate was on LPG. That time, you want know that there was a concern expressed that no, the LPG has actually unleashed the culture of consumerism uh, in, in Indian society. Consumerism, shopping, you no know, people. We, we talk about people getting addicted to drugs. We talk people getting addicted to you no know, smartphone but nobody talk about people getting addicted to shopping. So consumerism, I am giving an example context. Suppose you want to study the impact of consumerism on households in Mumbai. Then you, you want to see consumerism diversity, variation in that variable, no? You want to see uh, the, the high class households, upper class, high income groups, then middle income groups and lower income group. So th this is the quota system. So what in quota sampling, you can say that your, your purpose of research is to study the impact of consumerism on households in Mumbai and households in Mumbai, uh, they, they are quite diverse in order to capture that diversity, to give representativeness to all the households I am I am dividing you know, households into two three groups, high income group households, middle income households, and low income households. Then from each house each group I am selecting, you no know, suppose hundred households, three hundred is going to be my sample. You are getting my point. This is the quota sample. You have decided quota. Sometimes you can say that you no. Know, uh, uh, for considering the uh, no, uh, number of people available, large number and all, then you can say that for uh, no, one some segment, I will give 150, I can take people who are more forthcoming. Because if you, in case of rich, rich group and all, uh, I come across our student had issues actually in terms of, uh, uh, no, uh, report building. Even middle class also, most of the time there is a saying, you know, the social sciences in India have flourished uh, because of the humbleness and innocence of the slum people and poor people who welcomed researchers you know, without any hesitation in given interviews. But whereas rich people and all, you know, where the watchmen are guarding their housing society, middle class people who are having a lot of stress. Emirate, even while talking in their family, only middle class people fight actually. <laughs> even, you know, between couples only they fight. Hmm. Uh, so much stress is there nowadays. So then research are thinking to go to their houses and, uh, uh, you know, expecting they will welcome researcher. Uh, these are issues. So you decide quota. Uh, then uh, accordingly, you you actually select the 
respondents and then conduct interview. This is an example of quota sampling. What I said uh, in Mumbai because you you can't think about no multi stage and clustering. Yeah, because that involves very huge you know, uh, project kind of thing. So qualitatively, if your interest is to explore, uh, not estimating any parameter, then you can think of quota sampling as, a, as an alternative. Then snowball sampling, as I, I told you again, no? uh, so, so snowball sampling is in, in case of snowball sampling also. And in most of the cases of you know, qualitative sampling, uh, it is very difficult to determine the sample size in advance. In most cases, no, uh, you, you, it, it evolves. But, but just you can even, while, while submitting your research proposal, you can even just you know, give, give an approximate you know, uh, number size of the sample, uh, 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 considering you know, other studies, literature, by literature, you know, help of literature. Uh, similar studies have improved you know, around you know, 50 cases or 40 cases. In my case also, I may, I may select that one. But uh, the method, and you say snowball sampling method, no? Uh, how it works, the, the metaphor uh, snowball is used here. In, 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 a, in a Western country, especially you know, in, in countries uh, uh, in Northern Europe, like Finland, Sweden and all, no? uh, where actually, you know, hailstorm ice is quite common. Uh, in our context, we haven't seen ice only except in two states. Uh, this snowball is the, that metaphor. Snowball is a, a metaphor where uh, once a small ice ball is uh, rolled down, as it is rolled down, rolled down, it gains size. It, 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 it acquire larger size as it is rolled down. So similar idea is in, in, in snowball sampling, as you into one person, then the, that person will help you to get the contact or, or, or give you the information about the possible second participant. So then it builds like that. It is like a chain, chain, chain reaction. It builds your sample grows in size as you meet more and more people. And that is the idea of snowball sampling. Uh, the, the, when you think about snowball sampling again, no, uh, the, the criteria here, no, as earlier I told, no, uh, it can be used in any context, but most of the time, snowball sampling is used when, when the, the sample, the people you are looking are very, very minute, are quite, quite small in population, very small size, not visible. And sometimes you can say even hidden population in, in methodology, there is concept hidden population uh, and uh, undocumented is also there, but hidden, hidden, hidden population, uh, for instance, you know, uh, when, when in India and in the rest of the world, uh, when the, the AIDS was uh, you know, at its worst stage in the you know, early 90s and all, uh, then uh, they, there were also a lot of concerns about its spread and issues about you no know, uh, no uh, people you no know, uh, especially uh, who, who are quite vulnerable to uh, spread of AIDS and all uh, people uh, for example you must be aware about you no know, people uh, transgender people you know, and people with different sexual orientation and all. And uh, this kind of population was quite uh, hidden, hidden. And uh, then uh, uh, going with any any uh, uh, formal kind of sampling method was quite challenging those days. And I come across uh, some studies, especially uh, studies on HIV AIDS and uh, health seeking kind of behavior uh, by using snowball method, snowball sampling. Uh, you can think about these criteria. Snowball, you can think when population is hidden. Snowball, you can think when population may not be hidden, but population is very small. For instance, I can give an example. Uh, in, in, in cities like Mumbai, no? 
the, the, there is a, there is, a, there is a, everywhere there is a sand mafia. You might have heard water mafia also is there. I was told sand mafia, but I am not talking about sand mafia. But, but in general, uh, those who trade in sand, sand is quite crucial for construction industry to, to flourish. You no, know? most of the construction projects I, I come across have actually you know uh, uh, delayed or abandoned because of the lack of sand only. Because cement we can produce, you remember it on war putting cement we can produce. But I, I don't have any idea whether sand is being manufactured in like you know, cement and all. But, but sand is a quite natural you know, occurring thing. Uh, and uh, uh, if, if you want to study, the, the, there are two, two aspects. One, this is I come across uh, uh, that uh, the, the workers who, who actually load sand in the trucks that study that was from labor no labor perspective but if you want to study uh, the traders who deal in sand business then uh, i i don't think you will get a very because this this example i'm quoting very small population in mumbai hardly there can be believe me there can be 100 businessmen who are dealing with sand business and uh, most probably they, they may be connected. They may be knowing each one also. Um, may not be all 100 to 100. First 10 may be knowing each other. Then, uh, then 11th will be knowing, uh, no, second, 10th, uh, something like that. So when, when your, your, your research population is of this kind, then think about uh, snowball sampling. Now, uh, I think uh, I, I will open it for uh, question and answers because uh, 15 minutes, you know, last 15 minutes can be used for question and answer and all. So I will stop uh, sharing. Now, yeah, now question and answers, any, any issues you are having, your own questions or what I said, you want to add, you are welcome. You want to correct me, you are welcome. If you have your own research project, also you are welcome. Yeah. Sir, uh, there were a few questions previously. I'll just read the question. Okay. Uh, one question from Reshmi Pillai. Uh, uh, there is, is there any proportionate sampling method uh, the hmm. best, which is the best uh, in collecting data from aided and unaided college teachers in Mumbai. Mm -hmm. So she is asking whether proportionate sampling method is best. Okay. Yeah, interesting question. Very interesting. Yeah, because you know, proportionate is okay. Uh, uh, aided, suppose if aided college and unaided both both number is not skewed, then proportionate is okay. But number is very skewed, for instance, unaided are more like 70% are unaided, only 30 are aided, or uh, 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 vice versa. Then proportionate is not advisable. So, so that is, but I, I like uh, Resmi's idea of you know, conceptualizing, very good, yeah. Okay, so next question from Amitabh, sir. My research area is consumer behavior. What will be my sample size? Okay, consumer behavior. Uh, then, uh, no, uh, uh, then particular, you know, uh, particular area, city, or product. Th there are so many things, Amit, you know, so many issues. Uh, you can think of, but uh, again, as I told you, you know, uh, sample size, uh, you want to uh, decide then population, for example, suppose uh, a particular product, a particular product is, bought, is actually bought, or there are, there are 5,000 clientele, there are 5,000 clientele for a product, just I am, I am, I am imagining myself. 5,000 clientele for a product. 
and uh, if we want to study their preferences what shaped their preference what attracted them uh, to prepare that product and uh, issues and all then out of 5000 how many i should study i, I assume that amit you may be thinking like that then in that case you know then uh, uh, your level of significance no uh, yeah yeah tane district how we can uh, calculate the same sample size yeah amit ji it will be it will be uh, sana it will be discussed again after lunch session okay. but then uh, the very important thing in sample size is you no know, we have to set for the the confidence level level of significance whether it is at 1% Uh, are at five percent. Then, uh, if population is five thousand at one percent, automatically there are charts available now. One need not even go for no uh, sample size determination formula. If it is at level one percent level of significance, if population is five thousand, it will give idea that you can select three hundred as your sample. It will give an idea. And uh, th there are some people even they conduct first no pilot study they estimate you no know, mean then uh, pilot mean they use then they uh, then calculate for larger sample no what would be the size Th those are issues uh, will be addressed later on yeah okay okay sir uh, one more question uh, may I know if the purposive sampling technique will be appropriate on passengers at a train station or a railway station i guess mm -hmm. purpose you know yeah yes. then again no you, yeah for studying such you know passengers and all you are right the, those you know purpose you qualitative are the the most uh, appropriate one because uh, the the sample tends to be Uh, uh, quite uh, transitionary in the sense uh, mobile moving hmm. uh, of course they have uh, documented in the sense you know tickets and all one can generate their list name and all randomly do it but ideally speaking such kind of research if purpose is exploration and uh, if you need in depth interviews kind of thing no then purpose is the, the appropriate one yeah sir one more related question to this uh, mm. attitude or purchase behavior of working women in these type of titles shall i go with the purpose or convenience sampling convenience sampling ningappa has asked ha mm -hmm. uh, purchase yes. behavior of working women yeah it could be it could be combination it could be combination Uh, working woman, no. That convenience means you can still use your networking. Ah, uh, convenience can be a possible, and uh, then purpose you in the sense, no. Most of the time, no. Uh, if you are targeting, if you are targeting a particular, no, group, then always purpose you comes there. Both are possible. What I can say, both are possible, and a good study can be done with that. Sir, uh, I don't think this is connected, but uh, I'll just read out the question. If we collect data through Google form, then which sampling method is applicable? Yeah, uh, Google form. No, then suppose if if how you send uh, no uh, the Google form to members participants. Uh, suppose if you select uh, no each college, each management college faculty, you send it. Like for instance, ten like SMS colleges, I will send you no know, ten faculty. And then uh, LLIM colleges, I will send ten faculty. If I do some pattern systematic, you no, know, then it can take the random probabilistic. But if you just you no know, non-random, non-random in the sense, you no, know, whom say your email contacts you are having. Then it will take non-random actually in that case. So one uh, Shabnam has asked about how can I select sample size? Is there any technique? Uh, I think you have already answered this question. Yeah, you are right. <laughs> throughout the sessions. Yeah. Yeah. 
when uh, investor behavior in Thane district, so how we can calculate the sample size? Any method for this? Yeah, that that question, no, it's the same Amit asked, no, that mm, is yes, like yes. that only. Mm. I think almost it is done, sir. Yes, sir, almost all the questions you have answered. Okay. Kazim ji, can you just repost your question again? Because I'm not able to find your question. Ah, uh, I got it, yes. Academic achievement of students from joint and nuclear families. Which sampling method is appropriate for such kind of titles? Okay, good, interesting. The, the, you, you, can, you can still, you know, uh, joint family and nuclear family, you, you can still think of, uh, you know, uh, strata if you if you are uh, having very rigorous quantity to study stratification you you can do it but if you want to just uh, initial kind of uh, idea building no like i told you internal validity if you want to establish something to begin with exploration then you can go for non 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 random any one method you, you based on your objective yeah, you think, but here, no, again, uh, nuclear and joint family, uh, one should not think about snowball sampling. So somebody was asking, no, uh, one, one research, uh, Sanaji, I come across, uh, a student uh, is proposing a study on elderly and, and uh, a method uh, suggested was the snowball sampling. Then one elderly person, Sixty year is asking again, where is another sixty year old person? So th th that should not be the uh, right way actually, because elderly are quite visible. Their population is also no uh, around uh, now ten percent almost. Uh, so you out of four. Okay. Uh, one last question, shall we take, sir? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, uh, Vikas is asking for his PhD research. Uh, he had taken 500 samples, but if mm. external is asking to justify it, so how can he justify it? Yeah, that, that Vikas, the, the best way is, no, suppose. If you have done it, sample determination, no, with formula you have done it, then then tell the external that you no, know, it is based on a scientific formula, or if if, if it is uh, no, you have decided based on your objectives, then for instance, no, then you can explain that also rational, uh, objective wise also for instance, no. Uh, your objective requires you know a particular group second objective require another another set of groups uh, for instance uh, one study i come across uh, they, they are they are going to study uh, the, the impact of ict on youths uh, one objective is uh, sanajan how youths have used ict for uh, online learning then uh, then other objectives are quite generic so in that case, for that to, to serve your online learning, how ICT youths are using, you know, then that group also you select, for example, 100 youths I want college going because I want to see the impact of ICT on online learning. Then other common youths, how they are using, you know, internet, social media, uh, that is different. So it is quite creative. If you have done it scientifically, you can say them straight forth that it is I decided it based on scientific formula or if not you say that my my research objectives are so diverse and for each objective I have selected so and so groups yeah okay. um, one last question uh, yeah. My topic concerns with buying behavior of senior citizens uh, with reference to uh, FMCG products in Mumbai and Navi Mumbai. Which sampling method can be used? 
FMCG products in Mumbai and Nami Mumbai. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. The, then the, this may be a large survey. If it is a large survey, uh, then within per large survey itself, you no, know, I told you, uh, if if you are not able to go per random, no, then quota can be best quota sampling. And uh, if it is uh, you no know, random, if if you are funding, sometimes Sanaji, I forgotten to say that also. Sometimes funding agencies they insist on you no know, random sample, probabilistic. <laughs> They want researcher to do more hard work because they are paying, no? So uh, even government projects, uh, funded research, they, they insist on random probabilistic sampling. Mm. So you see it, if it is your own academic or your writing paper, uh, no, out of your own interest and all, then non-random is okay. But academically, there is no harm in that. So you, you decide it, no? Uh, if if the, the objectives require you no know, something because this uh, consumer behavior and all if some corporate group is asking you they want some recommendation some projections and all you no know, uh, go for then multi stage cluster sanaj i will advise multi stage ward wise you no know? in mumbai you take some wards then from each wards you take some localities then they will be happy he has done good work hard work huh? So then you can do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, sir. I think uh, you have almost answered all the questions with lots of patience. Okay, so without uh, wasting much time, uh, I will call upon our uh, librarian, ma'am, Sita Ravindranath, uh, to give a formal vote of thanks. Sita, ma'am, over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Sana, ma'am. I'm audible. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, one and all. I am Smita Ravindranath, member of IQAC of the college. Consider my privilege to propose a vote of thanks. I express my sincere gratitude to the resource person, Dr. Anil Sutal, sir, for this wonderful session on sampling and sampling techniques. Sir, the session was very enriching and resourceful and explained in a very lucid manner, making it easy for each one of us to understand. Thank you, sir. You're, it's always been a pleasure to listen to all your sessions. Sincere thanks to our benevolent management for providing us with the necessary approvals and support from time to time. I'm thankful to our principal, sir, Dr. Sridhara Shetty, for leading us from the front and for being a guiding force in all our endeavors. This RM workshop would not have been possible without the initiative and guidance from our vice principals, Thank you, Vice Principal Dr. Liji Santosh, ma'am, who is also our IQAC coordinator and Vice Principal Assistant Professor Sandesha Shetty, sir. A big thank you to the organizing team for working tirelessly towards bringing forth this 10 days ICSSR sponsored workshop. I also express my sincere thanks to the technical team for providing with all the technical support required for organizing the event. I am thankful to all the coordinators, teachers, and non teaching staff of the college for providing their support from time to time. Last but not the least, our enthusiastic participants. Thank you, dear participants, for joining us for this 10 days workshop and making the session so lively with your queries and feedback. We'll, we look forward to meet you again for the ne next few sessions too. Thank you once again. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Anil, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, all, yeah. all the best from my side, all the best to your workshop. I, I will leave then. Huh? Thank, thank, you, you, thank, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Seven more days to go, sir. <laughs> yes.